Welcome back, guys. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation, joined by Lane, and this is our post-game recap of uh, our game we just played, Death Watch versus Grey Knights. Hopefully you guys watch. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, the final score, Death Watch 80, Grey Knights 74. Very close game. Very, very close game. Uh, Six-point difference. I'm not too, not too upset about it. Looking back at it, I don't see anything that was just like, uh, I failed a purifying ritual. Lost two points on that. Mm -hmm. That's not six points. Yeah. Um, you know, man, those servitors. Servitors <laughs> should be able to stand up to a chaplain. Uh, why? I why? I that's, that's that's not dice rolls. How many rolls. points that's did not. you pay for your servitors? I'm not sure I even pay points for my <laughs> servitors. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're like 30 points I think, for the squad. Um, I think it's 30 for the squad. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no. They, uh, they uh, even, even if they held up there, if they would have failed leadership. So... How are you feeling with Death Watch now, being able to bounce around Doctor and Sid? How how'd that feel? It definitely makes a big difference. Um, and it's kind of, kind of tough in the Euro Army here because so much your characters and all the Terminators have two up saves. So I really felt with the list I built, I had to be in Devastator all the time because I didn't have that much. My heavy weapons were uh, Gatling cannons that are AP1 and the, the Storm cannons on the Leviathan, which are AP1. So I really needed to keep them at AP2 to get any work done. So uh, in this list, it was kind of a challenge, but I was glad I was able to stay in Devastator the whole time. Yeah, I was uh, not happy about that. Mm -hmm. I was not happy. The, uh, the wave I lost at, at the Terminator, I think that was kind of the, one of the, the pivotal shifting points where I really started to lose any sort of foothold of points mm -hmm. was the how, how I lost the Terminators. Uh, it was, you know, it was just, you got to hope a little bit in there for on my side of it, not on your side, you're happy with the results, but for my side of it, I definitely want to see that I stick some of those four ups and I really wasn't the melta guns were hitting the melta rifles were hitting and I wasn't sticking the four ups, mm -hmm. making saves on one damage weapon for days, but the multi damage one where I need to kind of depreciate that down a little bit isn't happening mm -hmm. against the one damage and the chip shots and the two damage weapons i got the feel no pain there to help back me up against those big thing the bigger shots i need some of those four ups to hit and that squad really didn't hit any four up involves which caused them to get swept too fast and then it was it was too easy for you to pick up the librarian too easy for you to pick up the you know do damage to the characters now granted mm -hmm. i got the apothecary out i got drago out got to heal them and do all that stuff but it shouldn't have come to that, I feel. And it should have been able to at least possibly, with losing that 300-point squad, possibly have a shot at that Terminator being able to objective secure it, hold the middle with one or two guys left. I was ready with two command points just to auto-pass the morale. Yeah. So I, I that was one where I was like, ouch. I don't know that I feel that, that it's going to happen that way a lot. But now looking at the other thing, it just did happen. How do I get around that? Mm -hmm. I don't think I trusted my weapons as much as I should. Seeing into the late game, I was hitting you what pretty you hard. Uh, I wasn't trusting the um, the power behind the four swords, and even in the and just how much damage I could actually put out there. I mean, like we saw when uh, the outriders were taking both objectives, five interceptors picked them up real fast, mm -hmm. real real fast. Well, it's uh, a lot of the durability in this this list comes from me having a, a five up invuln that my lieutenant essentially has an aura of five up invulns for all core. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the bikes were outside of that. Yep. So your higher AP combat weapons uh, from the interceptors were just going right through. I wasn't I wasn't making even no. though I wasn't making any six ups either. I no, no, but even so with like those. even so with like the dreadnoughts, mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't putting enough faith behind even that chip damage. Like it's like, oh wait, but I have these higher strength weapons. I got the hammers. I got these things, and I just didn't put faith in. Them. But this—I don't know. It, it's back and forth because at the same time, um, I kind of had to pick my shots to get those hammers in there and be able to pick up the dreads. I was surprised at picking up all those dreads like that. I might have gotten them a little too much in my head. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to do the damage to them. And I think my librarians might have been a little out of placement. I got to look at that. I really got to work on where those guys need to go. That was kind of rough there. Yeah, placement's a huge deal, especially when you're putting your characters out there and they're protected by one unit of Terminators. Um, you know, that those Terminators can get picked up. I mean, mm -hmm. like you say, uh, you put a lot of buffs on them and it's tough to chew through them, but um, they can do, you know, they can be killed. So Yeah, no, I definitely need to uh, work on my librarian placement because I could have probably uh, wield that a little different and uh, kept them alive. And then been able to, because with how much damage those guys were doing, 
I could have really started to just roll through the dreadnoughts mm -hmm. or dreadnoughts, just really roll through them and just bam, bam, yeah. bam, bam. So, um, Death Watch has been something I've talked a lot about mine. Death Watch has been something you played for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, like you said before, you have a massive collection of them and a lot of big things. Uh, has this has this helped you maybe stir that feeling to maybe play these guys again or stirring my feelings? I don't know. Did what it warm the cockles of my heart? It but, did. It did. Um, no, or, it's always good to see them perform well. And in this list was. Kind of, like I said, it was built to do Codex Warfare, and it was kind of tough in your list because especially the Outriders, they uh, they only have AP1 uh, on their chain swords, and so mm -hmm. I never really got into to, to, um, Assault Doctrine. So they didn't do a whole lot of output, I felt. They did some work, um, but that was the only thing I was kind of disappointed in. But in other matchups, they might be better into things that don't have you know such high armor. Uh, it's... It's hard to say, like, would we change up any secondaries? Our secondary game scored pretty well. Uh, teleport Strike got me, um, and I messed that one up. I mm -hmm. messed that one up. There's five of my six points right there. Yeah. I cast Empiric Amplification. I pass Empiric Amplification. I put it on the wrong target. Yeah. So that was one thing to look at in my mind. I was like, ah, that was bad. Right. You would uh, put it on the Dreadnought, and then the better shooting target ended up being or the better target ended up being the uh, Eradicators. Where I was able to put the side cannons into and pick up, I could have picked up three wood models with three damage side cannons. Yeah. Yeah, so that was one mistake right there. It could have been five points. But aside from that, I mean, we scored pretty decently. I think the only one that uh, you scored relatively low on was banners. Mm -hmm. But even so, our banner game was very push uh, push and pull. Like it was, yeah. I'm putting a banner, I'm doing this. And also you went for an aggressive early play with getting that banner right in the middle. And Sharon, haha, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tease you with them. I'm gonna tag this. Yeah, that was mostly just about to draw you out. Um, so because if you didn't come out and, and do something about that, then I would just outscore you. Exactly. On, on exactly. Big deal. And I wanted to get you out there so I could start killing you because I took two kill based uh, secondaries. So, exactly. Um, I mean, the only other thing I could do differently, maybe when I moved forward here with my uh, outrider oh. squad, I might have just held them back. And not done anything and just kept that banner there. And I would have scored a solid 10 on banners. Instead, I ended up with five because I overextended myself. Or not, maybe not 10 because you didn't take that one. But, right. uh, you know, eight. needless to say, our, ba yeah, our banners were kind of swirling. Yeah. I only got an eight on that. Yeah. So it was kind of very swirling. I did like that opening play to move to center and scan that center objective. Mm -hmm. That was nice because then that gave you extra primary points to score throughout the game. I did end up scoring nine, though. I still only got the two objectives. I never scanned this one. So I still only got six on that. But, uh, it was a good idea to grab that one in the middle with something that, you know, a dreadnought didn't have anything to shoot at, so I might as well do an action. Right, with it, so. right. It's like, hey, if you're going to hide, let me score points. Right. Um, if there was one unit you would change in your list, you have to you have to pick one unit that completely underperformed and you would drop out and change. What would it be? Uh, I might swap out one of the outrider squads. I think that speed with those bikes being able to go through buildings is great, but the two of them weren't so much. I need another close combat. Threat, so I might take something with uh, aggressors. Like aggressors. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's aggressors what I was thinking there. too. Like aggressors would be nice on there. Yeah. Um, would you do a ten man, full full fledged kill team like the eradicate uh, the heavy intercessors as well? Yeah, because that one does take heavy intercessors with it, so it's really chunky. You know, you got ten guys, three wounds a piece, T five. So um, yeah, that that would be another option. Uh, not obviously not as fast, but I really only need one squad to go out there and you know one bike squad to go out and put that banner in the center if I need it to. Uh, I can just kind of hold back and, and counter punch with those guys. So. so same question. If I had to drop one unit out of there, uh, I don't think I want to. I want to keep the list the way it is and try it a second time because, again, I'm getting the rust off there. Mm -hmm. uh, might look at some of the psychic power loadouts and stuff like that. Like I was talking to you, uh, I, I could drop the foretelling locus and give the three plus inbalm to my Libby. Since it's like once again, he's just he's not bouncing away. He's getting charged. He's not getting shot at, yeah. so he's not moving. So I might look into the three up in ball on him. Um, but if I were to drop one actual unit right now, can I count the servitors? <laughs> can I yeah, I mean, if they're because you have so many squads and you don't go out early, you don't really need action monkeys in your backfield. You can have strike squads or, or intercept, interceptors. interceptor squads do that, like five man interceptors do that. And then they can go out and contribute later in the game if need be. I guess they, you know having the servitors back there lets you lets me get that move, squad to move, move and start doing and, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, having them contribute out there. But as far as just putting up the banners and stuff, you're not putting everything out on the table. Turn one. You're not moving everything forward. Turn one. No. 
Um, and like I said, I do want to keep everything the same for right now. Um, if I were to pick a unit, I think that the servitors would be the underperformers mm -hmm. of it. And uh, the points I save up, excuse me, the points I save on them, uh, I might be able to cheap cut some stuff around and throw Castle and Crow in there. Because now with what we're talking about for a boy of the witch, I could go and put extra characters in because if somebody wants to play assassinate, they're not doing a boy of the witch. So it's kind of a back and forth there, except each one of those characters I put in is another three points for a boy of the witch. Yeah. But at least I'm not letting them. Well, I mean, people are going to max a boy of the witch. I did it in three turns. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Wow. <laughs> well, I got 17 points on a boy of the witch in three turns. Uh, you know, I you pretty didn't hard even there. buy me lunch. But um, when it was, you know, now that it's in the same category as assassinate, it's still having too many characters can be a challenge because there'll be times when you play against a psychic army they can't take aboard the witch because they are psychers and then they would still take assassinate. So that's something to keep in mind. That is true. And I do think that and also, like you said, like the, with the characters, how many characters like the librarian's great. Second librarian. Awesome. Apothecary works in this situation. Give or take Drago. Awesome. Grandmaster dread Knight. There's another character. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at two librarians, grandmaster dread Knight, Drago. There's four. Fifth one turns into the apothecary. That's kind of it. Maybe, I mean, Crow's good, but he's not great. He requires, I, in my opinion, he requires the command points to get him to his warlord trait. Um, Voldus, I can't take in this brotherhood. So then we're just looking at regular grandmasters and stuff like that. And I mean, they're good, but they're not great. Mm -hmm. There's better close combat characters in the game that people are preparing for that the grandmasters just kind of fall short. Drago is just, I mean, Drago's just a truck. He's got the attacks, he's got the profile, and he's got a three-up invulnerable save. Yeah, so he, durability stuff. Yeah, he may, he's a little bit different in that side, too, but at the same time, hit him hard enough and he goes away. You know, what was it, the Leviathan just shelled 18 shots into him and just yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a lot. Of, it took a lot of shots, a lot of bullets coming out. It does, but again, you, you're going to fail those three ups mm -hmm. in, yeah, on the eventually, AP. just yeah. by volume. Yeah, yep. Especially with two damage, they you know it doesn't take too many to get through there. So yeah, um, <laughs> I do want to give the I want to give the list another try. Um, as is, uh, we'll see. I might uh, see what Brian's got. Maybe get some Blood Angels or Custodies. And uh, I know your Votan's probably itching to try and one one turn my terminators after i kind of laughed at him and said ha your shooting didn't take me down yeah i think the votan would do no one gonna take my ain't no one gonna take my pride ain't no one gonna hold me down okay oh no all right gotta keep on moving no, that's not that. guys i hope you enjoyed this game uh this was a lot of fun it is kind of getting we're we're getting winding down to the end of edition so some of the stuff we're trying out it's gonna be a little fun mm -hmm. uh this would this one is kind of a test of what i'm gonna try and take to this R RTT at uh, Sweets and Geeks next month. So I'm going to get a little more practice with it and put this on the table some more. But uh, let me know what you guys think. If there's something you want to see, we have a couple different armies available. I have Admech, Necrons, and Grey Knights ready to play. Uh, we're working on Orcs. I have no way I'm going to have Marines done in time, but working on some <laughs> Space Marines. Uh, Lane, you got Death Guard, Custodes. Yeah, Death Watch. Death Watch uh, and Votan. I've got um, Imperial Knights too, but I don't. I, don't, I can't get through the Codex. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. It's a it's a cool book. I like the way yeah, it interacts, and I like the way it works. But that's you got to sit down and take a minute with that. And I think yeah. I'd also need to sit down and take a a little bit more time again with the Grey Knights and go back through everything again. Character positioning is key, and I haven't really had to do that much with Necrons lately. I how just, many CP did you start with? Four. Yeah, and then I got up to seven, and then I dropped down to two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you use them all, but also sometimes you start before, just check through your warlord traits and relics to see if there's something there that might might benefit the list the way it's running. Because that's what I do. I play a list for a while. I vote in, and, you know, I'll play 10 games, and then I'll go back and read all the warlord traits and relics again until I find something like, oh, I hadn't realized that before, but based on how I'm playing now, that makes more sense. So. I plan on it. The only issue is, is that a lot of the... Warlord traits are very selfish. They're mm -hmm. very self-included, except for Unyielding Anvil, which gives me objective secured. Yeah. But I already get that with the Terminators. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at some of the stratagems that I have for Grey Knights, my transhuman is called as true silver armor is going to be three command points yeah, for the true. Yeah. And then shunt move 
is two command points. Then I want the one command point to increase the range after I deep strike with the Libby, mm -hmm. and then another command point to go 3d6 on my cast. So the army does spend command points very, very quickly. Yeah. That's why I like having that four to start off with. But you are right. It, you, once you you know you look and you want to try, I, I do agree and I do believe that whenever you're trying to work on a list that way, having a lot of extra CP for re rolls in times that you're like, no, that should have hit, and you roll, then later on you look at it and go, well, it didn't matter if I re rolled that hit, if it hit or miss, that wasn't the point that I needed. That wasn't what I needed to happen. Yeah. I needed all this over on this other objective to go on. That wasn't important, and then you start seeing stuff like you said with warlord traits and things. And there are some cool things that Grey Knights have, um, but some of them are following the Wisdoms, which you spend points for, not command points, such as a uh, one of which I'll end on this note, one of which that you target, you give your, target a unit or give an aura, I'd have to double check it. What it does, it immediately gives you objective secured mm -hmm. and you're allowed to set the defense, but more or less it immediately gives you objective secured for a unit and it's a once per game effect. So it can be something nice where it's like, ha ha, I hit you. Ha ha, I'm objective secured. So I do, there, there are little tweaks like that. There's the four up overwatch uh, you have access to. There is a auspex scan that just as long as the guy's alive, someone in my army can do it. Yeah. So there are some other cool things. I think the foretelling locus is not very good in my army, especially when I'm hiding like that. It was like, oh, cool, I can pick these guys up. But then even when I went first, it was like, well, I pick up the Terminators, move them to middle, and then move them to middle. I don't get the middle objective, and I just get shot for no reason. Don't think my list does well with that. Yeah, I mean, especially because you can't re redeploy any further. Your Terminators only have that five-inch move, so a lot of times, even if you redeploy them right on the line, when you find out you're going first, they're not getting anywhere productive yeah. turn yeah. one. So. Unless I advance, in which case I'm still not going to be – I'm going to be in a sloppy position. Yeah. So, again, guys, final score – uh wow i almost just death said watch. photon necrons no, yeah no. final score death watch 80 80 gray knights 74 guys thank you for watching and we'll talk to you again soon